Let's get started. Welcome to our webinar and thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us. We're happy again to partner with one of our most popular speakers and a professional trader with over 30 years of experience to bring you this interactive options trading session today. You're in for a real treat because our speaker is going to analyze the Fed's decision uh, real time. And so um, my name is Gina Bokayas and I'm on the management team of Regal Securities, which is the parent company of eOption and its sister company, Invest Trade. And a few housekeeping matters. The session today will last approximately one hour. We ask that you take a moment to locate the Q&A box on your screen. Please enter all of your questions here throughout the webinar and our speaker will get to them as soon as he can. This session is a lightning round, so we encourage you to ask away using the Q&A box on your screen. And to tell you a bit about eOption, we offer you many options for your trading. You can trade stocks, exchange traded funds, bonds, and mutual funds. And of course, as our name implies, we love and specialize in options trading. We offer you some of the lowest rates in the country, including zero commission on stocks and ETFs, and options are just 10 cents per contract plus $1.99 per trade. We also offer an easy to use trading platform as well as free trading tools worth hundreds of dollars annually to help you spot option trading opportunities. And so before we start our presentation, I'd like you to walk you through our disclaimer. Option trading does have risks. And if you look on the screen, um, you'll see that this information presented in this webinar is for general informational purposes only and is not an individual recommendation or endorsement of a particular security. And the views expressed during the presentation are those of the speaker only. And if you go down to the fourth bullet point, options carry a high level of risk and are not suitable for all investors. Certain requirements must be met to trade options through our firm or any of its divisions. Please read the options disclosure document titled Characteristics and Risks of Standardized Options, and we do have a link on the screen, before considering any options transaction. You can also contact us directly for a copy at support at eoption.com, or um, we have the mailing address on there as well. So let's get started then. I'd like to introduce our speaker and um, Teddy Kekstan, and some of you may recognize his name from past webinars he's done with us, and he's one of our most popular speakers. We'd like to welcome him back today. And Teddy's a professional trader and has over 30 years of trading experience. He traded on the Chicago Board Options Exchange, Chicago Mercantile Exchange, and Chicago Board of Trade for 21 years, and has been an institutional market analyst for over 25 years. He serves as president of Forex Trading Unlocked and is the author of High Probable Japanese Candlestick Patterns. He also has a degree in finance from DePaul University. So we're happy to welcome him back for part two of this webinar series. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Teddy. Thank you. Thank you, Gina, for the introduction and thank you everyone for attending. Uh, I just want to throw up my disclaimer from my company since I'm doing this webinar. You can just eyeball that real quick. It's pretty much the same as what Gina had for eOption. All right, all you uh, bulls and bears out there, let's get ready for a very interesting day. We have a lot to talk about. All right, so let's get this screen off here. All right, and now we have the eOption.com trading platform up here, and you can see right now I have the daily outlook tab pulled up here. Every day when you first go on your trading platform, this is a great tool to see what's going on in the broad markets globally and abroad or <clears throat> and at home. And also they have a nice little breakdown of a lot of the different sectors about what's kind of happening, what's moving. And uh, they have a couple here like Boyd Gaming, Chipotle. These are familiar names, uh, Humana, Visa. So we're going to take a look at a couple of these stocks and uh, we're going to take advantage of this day because it is a Fed day. So before we get into that real quick, I just want to show you some of the tools here on the platform. You have a watch list where you can put your own different uh, stocks or options and have them. Uh, graded in different ways or indexes to see what's going on with them at a glance. You have your charting page, which you can use to do analysis on all the different markets that are out there. You can also use the research tab. Also, this gives you all kinds of um, numbers and stuff like that that you can use for computing. You have your options chain, so you can look up different options as well. Um, we we uh, can use that as a tool if during some of the Q&A, uh, &A, if you wish, we can look at different chains. Uh, then we have our trading thing. We're going to actually get into that in just a moment as far as executing a couple of uh, orders on a couple different stacks for this volatility day that we're going to play on. And uh, 
I think it'll be pretty uh, interesting because since you all know, we have the federal, uh, the FOMC meeting today, the two-day meeting comes to a close this afternoon. And unless something really changes, the outlook right now is that a three-quarter hike will be done. So that's the kind of day that we're gonna talk about especially with straddles, why we would use this kind of an option strategy on a day like today. And this is something that beginners to advanced traders would be using in a situation on a day just like today. So positions and orders, this is where you can maintain and like we can see right here that from our last webinar, if you attended that one, or you could check it out on the YouTube channel from eOption and uh, see what we covered when we uh, put on the uh, McCormick uh, straddle. You can see right here where the entry prices was for or were for the average and also where the market value is currently. So this shows your position and orders. Then there's news and then there's options play, which I really highly suggest that you check out at eOption.com and get more information from them as well. All right, so without further ado, let's get to what we wanna look at. All right, so as far as looking at the markets and what we're gonna to trade today on this volatile day, I took a look at a company, uh, Boyd Gaming. So this is trading right around 54.60. This market's been trending lower. You can see it's been making lower move lows and lower move highs. So why would we wanna pick a, day, a, tra a stock like this? Well. If stocks are going neutral, even though you're coming into a volatility to play, it's really hard to gauge as far as how much will they actually go away. They may actually just go up to an upper part of a range or a lower part of a range, and you won't get much follow through. However, if markets are trending, you can have a day like today that will either help to reinforce the trend or sometimes in the opposite will actually set up a corrective move against the trend. So it's a very good day for this kind of a, a trade. So looking at this market here, Boyd, we can see that it's coming off of right now over the short term and the daily basis, it's in a short term uptrend. However, the overall trend is down. So this is viewed as a correction. And now on a day like today, especially since we're coming into this, we're the upward downward sloping uh, resistance line is, excuse me, this is holding the channel intact. And we're coming right into this buffer area. So this would be a spot where you would look to look for a point where we could find a nice options trade. So today we're talking about straddles because of their volatility plays. So we're gonna look for the $58 strike price. Okay, so if you look at where this is right now, we're right at pretty much where the market is. This is right at the market, just a little bit. Um, uh, the market's just a little bit below that strike price. So there's a little bit of a premium uh, as far as on the call side versus the, or on the put side versus the uh, call side. All right, so let's go to our e option trading tab and see what Boyd is trading at. Now the question is, is it going to be, now we put the symbol in here for Boyd, and then we put in straddle. Now, once again, why are we looking at straddles on a day like today? Well, today we have one, it's a news event day. So when you want to, when do you want to put on straddles? Well, there's all kinds of reasons why a trader might put them on, um, especially if you have a certain system or you're looking for a certain move in a certain stock that you know of. Um, but when you're looking at just a broad based sector kind of thing, or broad based market kind of an event like the uh, Fed meeting today, this is a news event that you would like to trade. Why? Because you typically have high volatility. So what kind of position do you trade in a high volatile marker, market? Excuse me, the straddle. Okay, so straddle, news event, high volatility. These are all things that come together for this strategy. Then we also have the fact that it's a high impact economic event. Uh, we, I mentioned that we're looking for the Fed to do a three quarter point rate hike. This is something that's not like arbitrary. This is a big consensus. Everyone's been hearing about it in the news. The question is, are they gonna keep their aggressive stance? Are they gonna change their, their policy afterwards? Or what kind of speak will follow that? So this means that the volatility after the number is not expected to drop, it's actually expected to go higher. So this is very good for us in this, in this type of environment. And I'll get to some of these questions in uh, just a second uh, after we put the first couple trades on. All right, so when you combine all these factors, whether you're a beginner, tra beginner trader or an advanced trader, this is a strategy that you have a high likelihood of getting a nice move, whether it's the upside or the downside. And that's what you want when you have a straddle on. You don't care whether the market goes up or whether it goes down. You're not flipping a coin on direction. It doesn't matter which way it goes. You just wanna make sure that it moves. 
All right, so we have a 55 or a 60. Now, the key thing is for a straddle, you got to remember that one, you're buying to open, you're buying the options, okay, which means that you know what your risk is. Once you buy both options, you know exactly what it costs. You cannot lose more than what it costs you to put on the position. Another key thing is you have to remember with straddles is they have the same expiration months. So these are the early August uh, options expiring. The strike price is also the same. It's 55. Remember when we looked at our chart, we were looking for a right around the $55 mark because the market's trading just below that. So we have the 55 strike. We have one call buy to open and one put buy to open. Remember, you're buying a call and a put at the same strike price. Okay, so you're playing in both a long and a short position simultaneously. That's why you don't care whether it goes up or down because you'll make money on one when you're losing money on the other one. The key is that you don't want it to stay where it's at because you have time decay. Time works against you no matter what, but if you go nowhere, volatility drops, time decay drops, that's where you, you're, you're just, your position erodes. And that's what you don't want to have happen. However, in this situation, it's very unlikely. So once you have these entered here and you've confirmed that you got the order entered in properly, you click the verify button. It comes up with a little screen here that verifies, tells you what the cost is. The cost for this trade will be $459. So we put the trade and ding, there we go. Shabam, we now have a position. How do you know we have a position? We go to our account summary. Remember we had the McCormick trade from the last uh, webinar that we did? Well, now we have today our first position. We have just a couple more minutes going before the Fed release. We're putting on this Boyd uh, straddle. Okay, now let's take a look at, let's see, we have another one. We have PayPal and yes, let's take a look at PayPal. So we have PayPal. Okay. This market actually is up on the day. You can see that it's been trending higher just like this last market we looked at. This looks like it's in an upside correction because overall it's been trending lower. So this is the question is, is the trend gonna continue or is it gonna fall back on support? Now you can see that it made a higher move low. It was pulling back and then today because of the news gapped higher. So this is a big thing. When we have a big gap like this, it's over trading right now on the open and into today's session. If is there going to be a follow through move or is there or is it going to retract? You know, that's the key question. Odds are it's not going to just float where it's at right now. So this also is another reason why a straddle would be a good position. So we're looking at right around the eighty five dollar level here. It's eighty five fifty two. We go back to our trading platform. We enter PayPal. P.Y.P.L. And we're going to get to your questions in just a couple more minutes once we get these on and we'll see what the number happens. And then we can start to explain what's going on <laughs> as it happens. All right, so we know the market's right around 85. We're gonna put an 85 here for both sides. So once again, you have a buy to open for both options, quantity one, August expiration. Remember for a straddle, you have the same expiration month and the same expiration strike, or excuse me, the same strike price. The only difference is one is a call, one is a put. We hit the verify once again. It's our cost for the spread is just a little over $1,300. We hit the trade and shabam. Okay, now we go to our account summary and you can see that PayPal is now in there. So we have three existing positions going on currently right now. All right, now we're gonna do one last one. Um, let's look at... Uh, uh, Let's see, we could look at Visa, no, we did void. Oh yeah, I know what we'll look at. We're gonna look at something everyone knows. Everyone's familiar with Coca-Cola. All right, so KO, we have trading right around $62. So let's go to our paper trading thing here. We go to trading, oops, and we go to here, enter your symbol, and once again, after we enter our symbol, we go to the strategy. This is the nice thing is that you don't have to figure out what you're putting together when you use this platform. It already does, it lays it out for you. Okay, so we have the straddle. We have a 62.50. This is right right, pretty much where the market is. So we're gonna get the closest strike price we can. And the reason I keep make sure these are the same strike price, if they're not the same strike price, then it would not be a straddle, it would be a strangle. And that's a totally different thing, which we could do in this instance as well, but we're not doing that today. We're keeping it simple. So buy to open once again, quantity is one, same expiration, same strike. We hit the verify and boom, we just put on three trades with 
one with just a few seconds to spare. Okay, so we go back to our account summary and now we have all these trades that are entered. Okay, so let's catch up with the questions here and also with what's going on here. All right, want to learn more. Okay, do, 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 do. Okay, there's that. All right, so here we go. We got the 75%, uh, excuse, me, excuse me, three quarters of a percent uh, hike by the US Fed. All right, yeah, and we have a little thing here on the question on the chat. Okay, that's right. So this is what we've gotten. We've gotten what we were talking about, which was the expectation, Not, no surprise there. It would have been a surprise if it would have been lower, that's for sure. There was talk about 1%. Uh, now the question is, what kind of speak are we going to have afterwards? So let's see right now, now that we realize that the number just came out. So we have Coca-Cola. It's not doing anything really right now yet. Let's look at PYD. We have Boyd. They're kind of quiet right now as well. Everyone's just absorbing it. All right, let's go to MKC. This is the position we had on. Okay, now, interestingly enough, if you look at, since we already had this position on, see this blue line here? Let me make it so it's not so thick here. Okay, this was when we did the last webinar. On that day, this is where McCormick was, uh, stock was trading. It was right around where it was, uh, is right now, just a little bit uh, higher. Now, since then, like a week and a half ago, it had made a low all the way down at $80. That would have been a time where you could have gotten out of the straddle at that point because you would have already had $5 into it with a lot of time left on the option. So you'd have time premium left. You would have had a $5 move on the straddle. It would have been a good value on that one. It most likely would have been able to make a little bit of a profit on that. And it would have been right where if it kept on going lower, you actually would start to realize a really good profit. Now, why did we leave this one on? Well, one, if we were just looking at the stock for today, on today's basis, we would have put on the same straddle as we just already had put on. Now, remember when we put on the last webinar, we're trading things, options that have 25 to 45 days out till exp exp expiration. This is another case where we are right on that line going into the August uh, expiration for those uh, options. So right now that trade would still be just as valid as the other ones that we just placed just a few moments ago. Also, it's pretty much at the same level as it was before, but now there's a difference. The last time it came off of a lower move high, traded down towards the 85 level, and then it continued to trade down to the 80. So it came off a lower move high, it made a lower move low. Now the question is, we're pretty much right where we were, just a little bit lower than we put on the trade initially, is the trend going to remain intact or is it going to go higher? Now, if you look at the trend, we know that it's going down because it's making lower move lows and lower move highs. So if you look at this, this trend here is still intact. The question is, are we going to break out to the upside or are we going to fall back on support? Odds are we're not setting a range for this stock because the broad based market is not setting up for a range trade, especially because of what the Fed just did. We have a three quarter point hike that just, um, locked in the fact that they're holding their stance on higher interest rates. Now, the question is, there's two months away from the next meeting. The, the consensus and the outlook that was portrayed by the Fed itself was that they're going to keep raising rates for the rest of the year. If this is the case, odds are pretty good that certain trends right now will remain intact until that interest rate variable reverses or at least starts to show that they're going to start to pull back and not be so aggressive by their uh, tightening. So if that's the case, the trend remains your friend, then we still have going into August, another chance that if this right now, where we just came off of a couple of sessions ago, if this is the high, like we had this last swing high here, now let's move it to right around here. As you can see, Fed did what they're doing right now. It's not doing very much in the stock. So if we take out this high, well, then we're starting to sit, look like a neutral to higher trade. It's good for our straddle. As long as it goes away from $85, we want it to go up to definitely like around 90. Or we want it to come back down towards 80. If we get that $5 move right there, that premium will offset the price enough, especially if there's enough time to make it profitable. And especially anything beyond those, those barriers 
then you really start to see some profit, which could accelerate. We don't know what kind of speak they're going to come out with. So let's look at, once again, where Humana is at. Okay, here we go. Another question. Why are you not selling against the long options on both sides to reduce the money at risk or even doing as a strangle to reduce the risk even more, albeit your limit to the upside? Okay, so got a double-edged question. This is really good because we mentioned the, uh, the straddles and the strangles when we were looking at the pricing. Okay, so... First part of the uh, question, or actually I'll answer the second part because this is part of what the trend uh, example I was just talking about. So why not use a strangle to reduce the risk even more, um, albeit your limit to the upside? Okay, so that would be, for instance, where we were looking at this market here, where it's at 85, and then putting down like an 82.50 put. Okay, that would be one way of playing it, or we would even be able to do it as an 85 with an 87 half um, up there, meaning that if you're bearish, and that's where with this with this question, I believe is what he's gauging on is if you do have some some bias towards direction, you would use a strangle instead of a straddle. And the reason for that being is is that you can lay on the heavier option, meaning that if in this case you would buy. The put the more the put with the better premium, expecting it to continue to go down, and buy the higher call at a lower premium because you're not expecting that one to be where the market's going. That's your insurance policy in case the market does go the, to the upside instead of the downside. So very good question. Now that's why I picked strangles instead of straddles because you don't have to factor in that market bias. And especially since we started the webinar with only 15 minutes to put on a couple of trades and uh, break down a couple of markets and didn't have a chance to really put in a market bias. And, and why would we do that versus one versus the other? Now, the good thing about this question is it's got two tiered is one is that if you do have a bias of direction, then a strangle would be better than a straddle. Um, another thing is that you can also put on more strangles than straddles. So if you're right on your market bias, it's, it's a more economical way to maximize your capital. Um, however, it's a double-edged sword. Obviously, if you're wrong, you're wrong. That would be the same with either position, okay? Also, when it comes to a strangle, if, you, if your market bias is incorrect, and let's say that you don't necessarily get that much of a counter move in the other direction, but you still do, um, you're, you're not getting as much bang for your buck on your, on your call side, for instance, versus your, if you were bearish, uh, because your, your call is farther out. So the market has to move closer, a lot further distance towards that first strike price than it does below the, um, the put price to become a profitable option. And then as it's moving up there, that's a lot of distance that you would lose on the put end. So you actually, that kind of position would be costing you more money then. If, you're, if your market bias is wrong, the strangle then becomes actually, that's where leverage works against you. So you have to be mindful. That's a very good question on that one. And then also he was asking, so why are you selling against the long position on both sides to reduce the money at risk? Um, I, I think you're, this, this question, you're assuming that you would have stock um, this in this uh, in this under these examples right here. We're just looking at different markets, different stocks to uh, trade the options on without having any position on. If we had positions on, you know, then it would be this. This really doesn't is not like a hedge for your position because it's only really a hedge if your if this if the mark if you own the stock and you put on a strangle a straddle and the market goes down excessively. In that case, it would be a, a short-term hedge, but you need an excessive move to make up the difference of the stock loss that you're getting because you're putting on, a, you're not getting any premium, you're buying the options, okay? So you would have to, if you, if you don't see any market movement, then your hedge actually works against you because the stock didn't go anywhere and you just threw away money on a bunch of options for under a certain time frame. But good question on that, on both parts. Okay, are you surprised you didn't get did not see a bigger move in the stocks? Um, actually, you know what? I am extremely surprised because while we're in the middle of this watching and putting on these stocks, uh, I also have my other screens up, and I can see that the uh, the currencies aren't moving at all. And for anyone that knows anything about the um, derivatives markets and the broader markets, uh, interest rates, which were just raised three quarters of a point by our, our uh, Federal Reserve are a function of currency pricing. So the reason, one of the reasons why the dollar 
Um, the U.S. dollar has been very strong. I don't know if any of you follow currencies or not, or if you're going on vacation. Everyone knows that if you're going outside of the United States on vacation right now, for the most part, you're, you can do it a lot cheaper than you could a year or two ago. That's for sure, because of the value of the dollar versus, say, the euro or the pound or the yen or what have you. Um, so in that regards, it's cheaper. Um, also, that means that our exports are more affordable right now in the short run. OK, so these are good things that are strong for, for the Americans and, and the U.S. economy. However, as the dollar turns, then we have a really big problem because we're a net ex importer of goods. So that's not a good thing. Everything's going to get if you think we have inflation now, wait till the currency flips and we have a devaluation on the, our dollar. Um, so that's why I'm surprised that we haven't seen any type of move today, especially with over the past two and a half weeks um, in front of the feds raising the rate, they actually, the, the market has been going up in price, meaning down in rate. So we know that the market factored in three quarters already, but it's very odd that we've had such a huge correction. Typically you would see the, the bond market selling off right now and then see the dollar um, railing, which right now you don't really see very much market action going on at all. So yeah, I am. If you if you think, am I surprised that the stocks aren't moving? I'm very, very surprised. I mean, since we've been talking, McCormick hasn't gone anywhere. Let's like, go back to, let's see, Boyd and see if that started to make a move. Okay, that hasn't really moved at all either. It's just slightly lower. And let's see, let's look at Coca-Cola where we ended up that one. Okay, 62.35. So that's, yeah, that's right where, you know, that's pretty much right where we're at. We're right at our strike prices. So yes, very, very surprised that we haven't seen any move. Um, is this a good strategy to use near an earnings period? Absolutely, Mark. Very good question. I got a second question from Mark. Is this strategy a good uh, time for earnings? Absolutely. Once again, Straddles um, seem very straddles and strangles seem very very elementary as far as um, option spreads. One because you're a buyer, and most people think that if you're a buyer of spreads and especially something like a straddle or a strangle, that um, you're just a beginning trader. Well, that is totally not the case. It is a strategy that beginners should start with because one, you you know exactly what your risk is when you're buying a straddle or a strangle, which is the same difference except moving you're having two different strike prices and then you also usually have a, a trend bias if you will um you you know what your risk is going into it you can't lose more than you put into it and you know also there's a defined area of where you need to get the market to go to to break even um on expiration so you know how far ultimately it has to be on the last day if you were to hold it that long and then in between where it is now and then if you have a move that goes towards your way, either, well, in this, in this case, either up or down, and sets a new trend, you get to that point much or much quicker, you know? So for instance, like today, if we would have gotten the move, which you know what, it could still happen. There's been Fed days where it's like, it seems like a non-event. And then all of a sudden, 15 minutes away, 20 minutes later, the market starts swinging. So, and that's another case too. You got to realize that since the bond market's not moving and the currency market's not moving, the, the interest rate markets close at two um, uh, central standard time or three o'clock New York time. So you realize that the Fed did their meeting. It's always 45 minutes before the bonds and the 10 years close. When they close at two, the cash markets, uh, that's when all of a sudden the markets could go haywire. So if, when we actually end our webinar today from two o'clock to three o'clock, and I would advise all of you that are watching the webinar right now to check out how um, both McCormick, Coca-Cola, Boyd, and PayPal move over the next couple of hours, especially the last hour from two o'clock to three o'clock, because once the interest rate cash markets close, the currency market most likely is going to start to spring off and move, I, I would assume, because it, there's a differential, even though the expectations are there, the foreign markets have been closed since the morning and the Asian markets open up in just a few more hours, another five, six hours. So there will be a trade and some sort of momentum that will build. And I think the volatility you'll see for all of these stocks will, will definitely, we'll see the move over the next couple of sessions. So yeah, very, very good question. Um, and for earnings, also that's the same thing like for earnings, you have an expectation of whether you meet or beat earnings. Like today, today, Speaking of earnings, we go back to our, our daily outlook. This is why it's a really good, here we go. So we were talking about, 
with Boyd Gaming. What was it? Humana, I think. Yeah. Okay. So speaking of earnings, we have Humana, which adjusts its earnings per, earnings per share of eight dollar and sixty seven versus seven sixty seven. This is a pretty good situation where it would have been nice to have put on a straddle yesterday in Humana. Watch this one, folks. I was actually looking at this to think of maybe this would be a good example, and we'll see, we'll see why it really is not a good example to get into it now. Look at this. Yesterday, Humana closed at $492.28. Um, oops, I'm sorry, wait a minute. It uh, closed, yeah, 492. And now we are currently at 473. So Humana has dropped $20 from the close of yesterday to where it's trading currently right now. Now let's go to Humana and look at the trading and look at how much the options would cost. So whether you put it on yesterday and caught a $20 move, or, let, or let's say you wanted to do it right now. Why would you or why would you not? So this is a really good question. So whether you're trading earnings or news events when you are looking for a move, so once again, great question, um, you have to make sure that the pricing is there. So let's see, you wanna put these both at 475. Okay, so if we look at the pricing here, this, for this option right here costs $2,270, okay? That's what it would cost you to put on. So that's $2,270. Now, volatility because of a move like this has already spiked so high that buying a position like a straddle or even a strangle, if you had some sort of directional bias, um, is not, it's too pricey, it's too expensive. Now, if you were selling them, and I still wouldn't suggest anybody for sure, even advanced traders, you have to know exactly what you're doing and how to leg around in case it goes the wrong way. Um, selling these options is where the money is at. Um, buying it is very tricky because think about the cost here, what you would need. 2290, so this is a 475. So let's look at 475. Let's put a strike price in here at 475. How much movement do you need? Okay, well, you need definitely, at the very least, you need a $20 move, for sure, at least, just to get you to, let's see, we're at 475, so you would need to get to 495, we're gonna use a different color for here. So 495. And I'm not saying that this can't happen, anything can happen in this world and in, this, in the markets. However, you got to think about what's your expectations and how fast can it occur. So we have, if we go back to our option chain for Humana. Okay, so. So very good question about the news events and earnings. Uh, and I, I've used the uh, straddles and strangles for earnings, and I definitely suggest those as one way to trade them, actually predominantly them, um, but you gotta make sure your pricing is right. Okay, so let's go back to where we're at, four, 475, okay. And we have the April, so, we have, so it's August 20th, it's August 23, yeah. August with 23 days to, yeah, so it's August 20th is the expiration. Actually, August 18th. 19th. Here we go. 19th. Oops, I got to put the rhyme. Sorry about that, folks. I thought I had the. So, why wouldn't you do Humana? It's a little darker. Make this green. Okay, so now you can see here's our timeline. So, we need to get from here. And then we need to get from here to up there. Oops. Oops. Okay, from here to down here <laughs> by this time and expiration. And now let me, oops, move this chart. Uh, sorry about that. You gotta get it where I can, there we go. Now I can draw it to up there. Okay. All right. So for Humana, why we wouldn't use this one as far as the cost basis. So remember when we go back here to trading. There we go. All right. So the cost basis for this one is remember 
it says 2330 options are a multiple of 100 so that's $2300 or 2330 actually um so 2300 dollars from if we have a 475 or excuse me 470 that's not what we want 470 what was the option price again my bad uh 475 so here we go this one needs to be okay that's right it's the right price all right so 475 is our baseline for our strike prices so to go to 95 yeah we could do it we just came from a higher move of high up there we could be making a higher move low and maintaining the uptrend or we could be getting with the way it's moving today it looks like it actually wants to keep on correcting to the downside right now it's in an uptrend so any slide would be a bearish move the question is, <clears throat> how far can we can we get this twenty dollars in that time frame? Well, we could, but because the time that's left, we only have twenty three days left to expiration. When we put on the McCormick trade in the last ep uh, last uh, so last webinar, um, when we put these trades on, you're looking for usually around twenty five to forty five days of expiration. We're right at the bottom cap of putting on this this trade and considering that we have two weekends coming in into this this last three weeks of the trade it's not there's a lot of time decay that you're going to be working against you as far as that um there's not much left and if you had at least a, another extra two three weeks on a, this expensive of a spread then i would say maybe you have a little bit more of a chance because what happens if you start to go sideways? Um, that's what would, would worry me is that if you set up, establish a range between, because these numbers aren't looking so good. Let's just say you used your upper part of your range here. And also let's say this lower part of the range down here somewhere. Okay. You could be getting squeezed right around your strike prices, meaning that you're going to get to your break even point but then your volatility is dropping, your time premium is dropping. You have to get below these levels. You got to get below from uh, 470, you got to get below 495, and you got to get below four. Whoops, that should be 55, not 54. Sorry about that, folks. Okay, so you need to get physically or excuse me, uh, numerically below these levels or above these levels to start to. Well, hold your pro hold your place at break even let alone turn a profit and it's just too expensive for that kind of a move versus when you go back to what we did put on remember when we did our trades we have the paypal trade we have the coca-cola trade and the boy trade these all cost between what was it 1200 i think around 1200 and also well, this one wasn't that expensive. The Coca-Cola one was only like around four, three hundred and some dollars. Um, so these you have a lot more reward to risk ratio, meaning that your your risk is not very high and your potential reward for movement is is there because on the Humana trade, you have to go way beyond twenty dollars to start to realize a profit. And that would have to be, especially if you're close to expiration. Now, if we were to see a big move in Humana over the next couple of days, that would be a different story. But you have to hope then for a big move. Where's the reason for that? The Fed just came out with their numbers today. Humana came out with their earnings today. The, the, earning, the day is over. The event is over. So if it doesn't happen, that's when you want to be able to just get out of the trade. So what would happen with the Humana trade as volatility is dropping at these levels, it'd be very expensive just to watch the market go nowhere. Um, however, if you look at the trades we put on, and this goes back to, aren't you surprised the market didn't go anywhere? If we were only trading these right here based off of an earnings per se, um, it would be all the reason in the world to be like, okay, the market didn't move. That's, we took our shot, let's liquidate the spread. The worst thing that happens is you lose a couple of dollars. Like for instance, if we were to eliminate the PayPal right here, for instance, what would we be down? We'd be down 50, we'd be down $5. So we're down, it's only 50 bucks. You know, it's not, it's not a very big, it's not a very big amount of money, you know? So that's, in that case, you gotta be happy with that. So you took your shot. If the market would have moved on the number, or excuse me, in this case, uh, the federal, uh, the, the Fed uh, rate decision, then we would be saying, hey, all right, you caught a nice move, and you could either decide whether to stay with it 
or to get out of it right away. That's the other thing is, let's say that PayPal or Coca-Cola, let's go back to something everyone knows, Coca-Cola, which isn't going anywhere right now. Let's say that it went just down to the lows of the day. What was it, 61.79? Okay, that's not that far away. But if it started trending lower or even made new lows on the day, you might say, hey, it made a, high, a lower move high. It's been making coming off a of lower move highs and lower move lows. Maybe it's going to actually hit support some more. You could leave it on for a couple of days. Or if it would have gone down and made new lows today, you take it off. So for news events, you're not looking to hold them for a longer, a longer period of time. These, however, when we put these on, we were looking at the outlook being like, okay, these are major watchers. We're going to have a Fed um, decision. Maybe it's going to sh shake up the overall trend with this with the stock market, meaning the broad S&Ps, NASDAQ, what have you, depending on um, which uh, index these uh, particular stocks are in. Uh, so we didn't have it. These are days where you, you look for it to happen. Guess what? It doesn't always happen. But you look for days. These are days you can set your calendar to. And when you're an options trader versus other traders, like for instance, this morning I was giving uh, one of my, my uh, Wednesday uh, excerpts on a different show where I told people, I'm like, unless you're already involved in the market on Fed Day, unless you're an options trader, wait until tomorrow because there's too much noise. Because a lot of times you have just uh, algos kicking up to the upside and to the downside and all the weak longs and shorts get squeezed and then the market ends up going nowhere, you know, when, it, when all is said and done. In that case, if you're trading other derivatives or just stocks in, in general, you can end up losing money you know, when, on a day where you probably wouldn't have had you been trading options. This is the case where options give you the ability to manage your risk. And in this case, we know exactly what our risk is on each of these spreads. We know what our defined targets are to upside or downside that we need to be at by expiration to break even. And we, which are also levels beforehand that if they cross, we can execute, uh, get out of these spreads or leg into different ones um, if we wish to to carry on the trade. So these are all things that you can do if you get the market movement. We didn't get it today. <laughs> so, but then once I, like I said, I wouldn't doubt that sometime today um, after a bonds close at two o'clock, uh, about 20 minutes or so, that these, these stocks are actually going to catch a move. So I'm sorry that they didn't catch a move today, but let's get to another question. All right, let's see. We have, um, what is the minimum amount required? Can it be done weekly? Uh, okay, so the minimum amount, that's a really good question. So that's why we looked at these different uh, uh, options as far as the pricing. Humana, obviously, you're going to need a big account to trade that. You know, you're looking at options that cost, you know, for 22, that's, you know, $23,000. So versus something that costs, you know, we looked at the, I think the cheapest spread we put on was, uh, what was it, the the Coca-Cola one. Yeah, I think the Coca-Cola one was the cheapest one there that was only at, was it two, one, yeah, 230, 240. So it was $2,400. So that was, that's not that expensive. Uh, so you're looking at 10 times the pricing for, now the more expensive the stock, the more expensive the options are too. Um, the more volatile the stock, like for instance, like Tesla, uh, this is where a strategy like this is for beginner and advanced. And this is why I tell you that it is because if you're going to trade something like Tesla, that's very expensive with straddles, like in this kind of situation, you really got to be nimble. You need to know what's going on. And then that's, this would be a case where had you bought them before the number today or, or earnings per se, and nothing happens, you'd be flipping out of them and taking a small loss right off the bat, which is Trade part of trading is taking small losses. You're not going to be right in every situation. Um, this is a day where if you were right and the volatility did shine through, well, you actually are very happy because within literally just a period of you know a half an hour to two, a couple hours, you're going to recognize a move where you can exercise your or not actually um, uh, uh, settle out of your option spreads at a profit. Or if you have a lead on an, either an existing trend or on a counter trend that you think is going to still have follow through tomorrow, well, then, then it's a different story. Um, now, as far as it, because the markets are still so quiet, I mean, I'm looking at the currencies, what they're doing, and they're just, they're not really doing anything at all. I mean, they're, they're slightly, a dollar is starting to finally fall apart right now a little bit, um, but that's neither here nor there. It's not that radical of a move. I would say that unless they really start to hit the dollar, 
And the only way I see that happening is that if they speak, um, because I'm not listening to the what they were talking about in the Fed meeting afterwards, is if they're holding back on September as far as being a three quarter point. But the expectation is still for three quarters of a point. We do have a lot of economic numbers coming out between now and then also that will impact that. So yeah, very good question though, as far as um, as far as minimal amounts is that depending on what you're trading and how volatile it is, that'll dictate it for one. You don't want to extend, overextend yourself or use leverage. That's the nice thing about options is that uh, unlike leverage products, options, they do they, they, they work with leverage, but in a way that you can control it much better than you can, for instance, like with outright futures or other derivatives and things like that. So, and with the straddles, for instance, we know for exactly the most you can lose. And on a day like today, you don't get your movement. It's your choice. You can exit, you can uh, uh, exit your, uh, your strategy or excuse me, your straddles and it's very small, minimal loss plus your, uh, your commissions, obviously. So, but very good question. Yes. That's uh, um, uh, what expiration date should you choose for a straddle you're executing around earnings? Okay. That's a really good one. Should it be for Friday night right after earnings? Okay. So if in our, in our case, what I would say, if you're a beginning trader, um, you should choose a straddle that goes out 25 to 45 days uh, to trade options that are expiring, for instance, on Friday, if there's an earnings that report that comes out this afternoon or tomorrow afternoon in front of a Friday expiration, you can do that. Um, that's more gambling. And it's also a little bit more of a sophisticated trade where that's the part where I would say more advanced traders should be paying attention to that kind of a trade. Um, just because, you, you, well, one, you only have a short time frame, So you, you have no value as far as time on the option. You're just, you're just trading the number literally and the, and the result of a move or not having a move. Um, if you do that, I would say that be careful with how much capital that you use because Trading options that are going to expire in two days are going to be a lot cheaper than options that are going to expire in 25 to 45 days, meaning that you're probably going to be more prone to put on more spreads than you normally would, which is not good money management. Now, if you can maintain good money management, meaning that you would put on the same amount uh, based off of your capital for a longer term position than if than a short one well then that's okay but if you're going to if you're going to load up on a position because you're looking to play just a couple of days like that you really got to be right otherwise you're you're throwing your money away so that's it's a very good question uh and usually if you're going to do that it's a combined two day option with another 25 to 45 day option out. And that's a whole webinar in itself. I don't want to, I don't want to get technical even remotely into that. Cause that once again, that's for, for advanced options traders, not for beginning, but really good question. Absolutely. Um, let's see what uh, we got a time for a couple more questions here. Uh, let's see. Should you do, 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 do. I have one other question and most of your trades, both the puts and the calls bought are negative. Isn't the point of the strategy that it will go up and fail. Okay. Very, very good. Very good answer. On our question on that one, you know, why it's negative uh, because the market hasn't moved. Volatility has dropped. Okay. Well, time is also decaying, but it's not that difference between, you know, 20 minutes, but absolutely. And this is why, this is a volatility play. You need the market to move. If it doesn't move, you're not going to make any money. The position is just going to decay. So that's why, for instance, we have um, your, let's see, on the on the BYD, on the BOIT. Yes, that's the one where we have both positions are now down, uh, let's see, $3 in the one, five, almost $6 in the other one. So now if we look at BOIT, let's see, we have our BYD. If we pull up, let's just go on the five minute chart. So you can see we started the webinar, what was it, one o'clock? And yeah, since we put the trade on, it's basically gone nowhere. It's gone nowhere. It's only, it's only a difference of a few pennies as far as pricing. So yeah, so the reason why that pricing is that way is that the Fed is done with their number. And remember, this isn't like just like an earnings number. This is a, an economic release number that we know 
the next one doesn't come for two months. The last one was a month ago. Now we have a gap of two months where the Fed is going to digest all kinds of economic monthly numbers for the rest of this month. And then also next month, August and into September. And we don't know what's going to happen with the rates. Okay. So we have to look to the next one, but right now, it's off the table. So that volatility factor, boom. The fact that the stock market right now is not reacting either to it very much is dropping volatility. So I would assume that the VIX is not, people who were looking at the, the VIX spiking before, they're seeing it a little bit, not necessarily dropping significantly, but I would see, think probably easing off. So that's why you have the, uh, the pricing of the options because it's gone nowhere decreasing. Remember, a straddle is a volatility play. It has to move further away from where the, your strike price is and or where you got in. It doesn't matter. It has to move. And if it's not moving, it's those other variables all being the same. Like for instance, your strike, your, your price doesn't move, but what goes down, time goes down, volatility goes down. So the price of those options go down. So unless you get market movement for to bring up volatility and pricing, remember pricing is part of, of, your, of your equation. If you don't have a, a move, you have no pricing component. So that's why you have the negative. Very good question. Um, let's see, uh, if I had one, uh, after 2.30 PM, SPY exploded up to four, yeah. Um, Yes, after 2.30 p.m. Eastern time, which is 1.30. Okay, yeah, that's the SPY went 400. You know what the thing, though, is that people think a 400-point move in the, in the SPY actually means something. It doesn't mean anything. It's not a very big move. <laughs> it really isn't. So um, that little factor there isn't gonna, enough to jar any of the stocks that we were looking at. I mean, if we look at, once again, Boyd's going nowhere. Coca-Cola, not going anywhere. You know, so that's just what we're looking at. It's just a non-event number. Expectations were filled. Obviously, the um, Powell has not said anything this afternoon to shake up things enough. Um, the number's done. I think that's why you're getting a positive reaction in the uh, in the in the, in the, in the stock indexes. Uh, but that's just because they know it's going to be two months before they raise rates again. Remember, raising rates puts a little pressure on the stock market. The, the bonds have been going up and the, the market rate has actually been going down while the Fed is raising rates. So between the bond markets rallying and also with the uh, S&Ps now where they know they don't have to worry, or excuse me, the SBY or any of the indexes don't have to worry about a rate hike for two months. It gives them a little bit of a relief. Makes the bulls a little happier. I'd be careful though, because it's probably a rally to sell. Earnings are getting really, really bad. And uh, <laughs> I wouldn't doubt to come third and fourth quarter, people are really, really going to be um, really hawking earnings on most stocks as we move forward towards the end of the year and into 2023. Because one, it's kind of funny. <clears throat> I was in the S&Ps for over 21 years. And even ever since then, and even still today, people are like, how come the stock market just keeps on going up? I'm like, earnings earnings. When earnings dry up, that's when the market definitely starts to turn bearish because there's no way you can, uh, you can sustain bull market moves in a decreasing when your, when your assets are de de depreciating in value, just as impossible. And when your cash flows dry up, that's the other thing because cash is king. When you have no cash coming in, guess what? You're not making it to the game anymore. You're not, you're not even going to be showing up. So, but that's a whole nother um, thing going on itself. Let's see what other question we have here. Okay, from Debbie, right? So I'm asking, it should be putting in my straddle 25 to 45 to four earnings. Um, no, you don't put them in 25 to 45 days before earnings. You want them to be where when you are putting them on, whether it's the day of earnings or a couple of days before earnings, you want the options to have around 25 to 45 days left before expiration. Um, because that's why the one uh, question I had, I think it was Mark, asked about, would you put on uh, two-day options that are expiring on Friday for earnings to come out, say, today or tomorrow? Um, once again, that's a more advanced play. Um, but if you are using straddles or strangles for earnings um, as a beginner or even advanced trader, I would say uh, use the 25 to 45 days out because it gives you more of a chance to actually absorb the move. Sometimes you might want to, if you're, I mean, if you're right at scratch, the day of, you might want to let it move, sit for another couple of days. All these stocks right here, if there wasn't a number today, I would have set, still put on as far as 
a viable trade right now for all these markets. And I'm not telling you to do that. This is not about that. Um, but those would be viable trades right now because of where they're hanging in. Remember, you had uh, what was the first one we looked at was, I think, PayPal, wasn't it? Uh, which exploded. Okay, so this one, you have a gap. So let's just say, forget that we have the, the Fed meeting. You have a gap right here from yesterday's close. Now, this is a big deal. This is where the market settled yesterday. It opened all the way up here. That's a big, huge move. So if you had, if you had a straddle on yesterday, it would have been great. But today's a day where you're like, okay, now we're making a higher move high after a higher move low. This trend could continue. It could be going, could go on all the way up to 108 or who knows over the next couple of months or whatever, or it may fall back on support. We don't know, but odds are is it's not hanging where it's at right now, especially when you see that, look at this line. This is the line where it doesn't stay below very much. It tries to hold, it's a failure line or it becomes resistance or where it becomes resistance, here's the kind of thing where it comes through and then it comes through back here, bobbles around and then takes off again. Or this becomes re resistance again and we know that this is setting us up to go lower. Remember that the overall trend here is still a bear. So for that reason, that's why you do the 25 to 45 days out because you, you're looking for some sort of movement. When you're only going sideways, it becomes more of a gamble, but at least when you're in some sort of a trend or in a corrective move of a trend, and especially towards an extreme, which right now we are in these cases on all of these, that's where a straddle or a strangle becomes a really good trade to put on. So, and also remember 25 to 45 days out, give or take a day or two, whatever. Um, but uh, right, that's the range you wanna shoot for. That's what you wanna go for, not two days. I'm not saying not to use two days. That's a great way of making money off of earnings if you're nimble and you know what you're doing and you're very cautious about how many you put on because um, you're not gonna be right most of the time. And even if you get a move, you need a decent move to, to make to up for the, the risk that you're taking. So that's just something you need to be very mindful of. But great questions. Um, Mark, oh, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. All right, so we have kind of gotten pretty far here. So we're gonna leave these trades on for our next webinar. I don't know um, if any of you um, had seen the first webinar. If you haven't seen this first one of the some um, three-part webinar series, make sure you go to eoption.com's uh, Yahoo, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, YouTube uh, page, and you can uh, pull up the today's video. It'll be on there within the next couple of days, I'm sure. You can look at the last one or other webinars we've done. Please like and subscribe to the channel, like the videos and leave some comments. It helps us with the algorithms and it can help you look back at the things we've talked about and also to bring up questions for the next webinar. And don't forget to, whilst we're talking about that, to sign up for the next webinar, which as you can see, let's see, the next webinar, mark your calendar. It will be a free interactive trading session with a professional trader, yours truly once again, part three of our series and we're uh, looking to see um, some interaction on what you guys think. We have great feedback from you on the Q&A. We really appreciate your time and all the questions and comments. And if you uh, check out the videos, pass them on to your friends. The next one will be Wednesday, August the 24th at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Register at eoption.com slash webinars. And with that, I'm going to pass it on now to Gina. Thank you guys once again for all of your time today. Good luck in all your trading endeavors. Great, thank you so much, Teddy. And just wanted to give a quick wrap up um, that was very interesting and informative. And thank you to all of our attendees today for taking the time out of your busy day to join us and for all your excellent questions. We really do appreciate it. And if you have any more option trading questions or trading questions in general, we're happy to help. You can send us an email at support at eoption.com at any time, and someone can get back to you and answer any questions. And just uh, a few items I wanted to reiterate. Uh, I hope you'll give eOption a try. Um, we charge zero for unlimited stock and ETF trades and options are just 10 cents per contract plus $1.99 per option trade. Um, as you saw in the webinar, we have a powerful, easy to use trading platform and you do get over $500 in free trading tools annually when you have an account with us. 
And one of the special features we offer is Options Play, which is an online tool that's free to all our customers that demystifies option trading and scans thousands of stocks daily to highlight potential option trades for you. So we hope you'll check that out. And we also hope you'll go to eOption.com, our website. We have all kinds of strategy links, over 100, where you can click on it. It's under the Resources tab. And you'll see all different strategies, uh, many of which Teddy mentioned today. You can click on it. It'll show you the motivation for using it as well as a brief video. So we also have all of our past videos on there as well. So we hope that you'll check that out. And last, um, just want to reiterate about YouTube. As Teddy said, this video, this webinar will be on our YouTube channel starting tomorrow. So if you want to see it again or um, you know, feel free to, to subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll be notified as soon as that's available. And for those of you that don't already have an account with us, we will have a special promotion on our YouTube channel to get free stock when you open an account. So we encourage you to just read under the description and you'll see that. It's only for a limited time. So we encourage you to check it out in the next couple of days. We don't want you to miss out on that. So um, again, thank you so much for your time. We greatly appreciate it. And we hope to see you at Teddy's and eOptions next webinar on August 24th. Thank you so much and have a wonderful afternoon. Bye now.